Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling General Linear Models Design of Experiments. And here we're going to look at the projection matrix onto the column space of X. And this plays such a critical role in the theory of design of experiments that it needed to be introduced early into this playlist and devoted to its own video. Now, four background videos that we're going to reference quite a bit are these four. And the BV stands for background video one, two, three, and four. Uh, generalized inverse matrix, perpendicular projection matrix, the Graham Schmidt orthogonalization process, perpendicular projection matrix, generalized inverse for a symmetric matrix. Now, the setting that we're in is we have a model, so we're in the general linear model setting. And, and, it, and it pretty much can always be written like this. And, you know, whether the betas are fixed or random or, you know, it, it can always be this. And then when you look at variance components or mixed modeling or design of experiments or regression, then you start tweaking things. But this is a general form uh, where the epsilon is has a mean of zero. The variances are constant sigma squared, and the covariance between any two epsilons is zero. Now, the epsilon vector is called the airspace, and the x beta is called the estimation space, or it's the column space of x, right? So we have a y dangling out there in space, and we want to do the best we can by this linear combination of the x's. We're going to find the betas. You know, what's, when you multiply these out by the columns, it's really a linear combination of these x's that best explains y. And then, of course, there's some error involved. But everything we do in here is it's called the estimation space. We want to estimate the parameters. We want to develop confidence intervals, hypothesis tests, etc. So in the multiple linear regression setting, the design matrix X is usually full column rank and the perpendicular projection matrix onto the column space of X, i.e. the hat matrix, is H is equal to X, X transpose X inverse, X transpose. And so what H does is it takes every dangling Y, and, and I say that sort of jokingly, but that's the way I visualize it. Y is a vector out in, in space and we want to project it onto the column space of X. And that's what the hat matrix does. So if we pre-multiply this Y vector by H, the hat matrix, which is a perpendicular projection matrix on the column space of X, we call it Y hat, right? Because y, y is a vector, but we pre-multiply it by H and it puts a hat on Y. That's why it's a hat matrix. But it creates this X uh, beta hat. Um, where these are the least squares estimates. So it's, a, it's really a, a linear combination of the x's. And that's what we use to best explain y. Now, in the design of experiment setting, x is usually not full rank. Thus, x transpose x is not invertible. And so now we need to study what the perpendicular projection matrix on the column space of x is in this setting for design of experiments. And we call it m instead of H, or let me rephrase that, I'm going to call it M, and it's X, X transpose X, generalized inverse, X transpose, okay, where X transpose X is a generalized inverse of X transpose X. Now, see background video three, property nine, for a proof of that this is the perpendicular projection matrix on the column space of X. So what that says, if we pre-multiply y by m, that takes that dangling y vector and projects it down into the column space of x, or the space that's spanned by the columns of x. And that's what this is. Now, instead of the least squares estimate, well, and it technically is the least squares estimate, but we're using this perpendicular projection matrix as opposed to this one to come up with an estimate of beta. So we're going to put a, a tilde to kind of separate them. Here we called it a hat. But this is the least squares estimate, just as much as this is. Now, 
we want to study the properties of M and I minus M. And when we start doing hypothesis testing, confidence intervals, contrasts, you name it, these are a critical role in the theory that we're going to use. So we want to show that M is symmetric and M is idempotent. And actually, any matrix that's symmetric and idempotent is a perpendicular projection matrix onto its own column space. So by BV4, background gradient 4, X transpose X, generalized inverse, is symmetric. So now let's look at M. I, I should have put M equal this. And when we take the transpose in, it goes to this, but it gets moved to the front. And then that is, it transpose this, but we it's symmetric. And then that gets moved to the back. So this is equal to itself. So it is symmetric. Now by background video four, if we take this matrix, which is M, and pre-multiply, using it pre-multiply X, we get X back. And that's proved in great detail in background video four. So now when we look at M times M, we we write out M twice, basically, but this piece here is X, so we, which is that. But this is just M, so M squared is M, and it is idempotent. Now we want to do the same thing for I minus M, show that it's symmetric and it's idempotent. So the proof that it's symmetric, you, you know, you I minus M transpose, you take the transpose in, but the identity matrix is symmetric, and M is symmetric, so we get I minus M back, so it is symmetric. Now the uh, I minus M squared, you FOIL it out, this, and then that, and then this, and then plus M squared. But this, since it's idempotent, it's just M, so we get M minus M, those cancel, and we have I minus M, right? So it is idempotent. Now we want to show that the column space of M is equal to the column space of X. And for a detailed proof of that, I'm going to point you to background video 2, property 2, to show that this is true. And in the interest of time for this video, we're just going to point you back to it. Now, that we want to show that the column space, so property M4, so this in M deals with this perpendicular projection matrix, we want to show that I minus M, the column space of that is equal to the orthogonal complement of the column space of X. And this is, a, it's also going to be huge in our theory. So the way you show that column spaces are equal, you assume that there's a vector in here and then it's also in here. And that shows that this is a subset of that. But then you show that a vector in here has to be a vector in here. So this is a subset of that, and since they're both subsets of each other, they have to be equal. So let's prove it this way first. Let's let V be a vector in this column space. So that means V is a linear combination of these columns, which is this. And this is for B in, in our N space, right? So that multiplied over is a linear combination of these vectors, which is V. But V can be broken up, since it's an N space, it can be broken up into two components, where B1 lives in the column space of X, and B2 lives in the, in the orthogonal complement of the column space of X. Now, since B1 is in the column space of X, it's also a linear combination of the X's, so we can write it like this. So this vector multiplied here means it's a linear combination of the X's, and of course C is in our P space, because there's P columns here. Now, V is equal to this, I minus M B, but B was these components. So we multiply I minus M into each of those. Now we multiply B1 into each of those, but we use this, CX. So we have CX, which is this, and then M times X CX. And, and here we have B B2 minus M times B2, okay? Now here, MX is just X, 
So we can see that by right here. So this is m times x is just x. So this is xc. We have xc minus xc. So that's 0. m is a perpendicular projection matrix on the column space of x. So any vector in the orthogonal complement space is 0. So this is 0. And we're left with b2. But by definition, b2 was in the orthogonal complement space. So it is in this. so it is an element of this. Now let's prove it the other way. Let's let v2 be in the orthogonal complement of the column space of x. And let's just pick any vector in the column space of x. Then v2 can be written like this, right? So v1, mv1, and if you multiply this v1 in, you get v1 here. And since this is in the column space of x, the perpendicular projection projects it back in the column space of x. But since it already lives there, it's v1. So we get v1 minus v1. So this is 0. And then over here, mv2. v2 lives in the column space, the orthogonal complement space of column space of x. So mv2 is 0. But then v2 times i is just v2. So this is v2. But now let's left factor out i minus m. And then v1 plus v2 is a vector. So a vector times these columns means it's in the column space of i minus m. Well, then we're done. We've proved it both ways. Um, now, to reiterate this fact that we used here, um, mx is just x. Now, we proved it in one, property one, up here. But I want to restate it as its own property that m times x, so m projects vectors down in the column space of x, but if they already live in x, it projects it back down onto itself, which to me is kind of a fascinating property in itself. So mx, and this is m, and that's x, and then this is just x, see property m1. <coughs> now, these two matrices multiplied together, I minus M times, oh, that should be M. And, I, and this is so important, I'm going to correct it live. Um, in the theory of what happens, that um, when we develop hypothesis tests, we have, a, and they're usually F tests or something like that, we need to show that, and they're quadratic forms, and we need to show that the numerator and denominator are independent, and you do that by showing that, that the matrix, the quadratic matrix, multiplied together is zero. And that's what we're doing here. So this is usually in the numerator, and this is usually in the quadratic form in the denominator. So this product is zero. So m times i is m, but m squared is m, so you get m minus m, which is zero. Oh, I don't know why I didn't. Oh my gosh, we, I did the same darn thing. And it's so important, I'm, I'm correcting it now because it is that important. So it's zero. So now property seven, the rank of M is equal to the trace of M. Now the trace is, is add up the diagonal elements, which is equal to the rank of X. So now by property M3, the column space of M is equal to the column space of X. So that means if we span the columns of M, we span the columns of x, we get the same uh, expansion, the same vector space. And so that means the, the uh, number of independent vectors, so the dimensions of m are equal to the dimensions of x. But that says the rank of m is equal to the rank of x. So since these column spaces are equal, the ranks are equal. So that means that we just showed this. Now, since m is an idempotent matrix. Now I have a video called idempotent matrix. That means the rank of M is equal to the trace of M. And that's that piece. So that's proven. So property 8, the rank of I minus M is equal to the trace of I minus M, which is equal to N minus the rank of X. So since I minus M is idempotent, that means you know it times itself, you get it back. That's by proof of this in, in this video, the rank is equal to the trace of that matrix. Now, to, so that's one part. 
So the trace of I minus M, that's equal to the trace of I minus the trace of M. But this is a diagonal matrix, so the trace is add up the N, N one diagonal element, so that's N. And the trace of M is the rank of X by property 7. Now, two more properties. Oh, maybe I was right up here. Oh, darn it. Um, so it is X, which is also true and very important. Multiplying X in, you get X. M times X is X. So you get X minus M X. And this is uh, zero. So, I mean, M X is X. So X minus X is zero. Well, I actually thought this is the property that we we're going to do. But since we already proved it, we'll skip it. And then property 10, while this generalized inverse is not unique, and so if one exists, usually an infinite number of generalized inverses exist for x transpose x. But what is so neat about m is that x, x transpose x, in generalized inverse x transpose is unique. So no matter what perpendicular projection matrix, I mean, no matter what generalized inverse matrix we use here, this product produces the same M perpendicular projection matrix. And we prove that in great detail in background video four, property number four in this video. Okay, well, that's all I have for this video. Sorry about that mix up on property six, I minus M times X is zero. And that makes sense to me. Instantly, this is a perpendicular projection matrix onto the orthogonal complement space of X. So anything in X times it is going to be zero, right? Because it projects it onto the orthogonal complement space. And so this will come up quite a bit in our video. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.